Kitco Mining special coverage of Fast Markets Lithium Supply and Battery Raw Materials is brought to you by Lindian Resources. So for Hilbert of the Mineral Engineers and Geologists started Battery Age Minerals, Gerard Halvin is CEO. Gerard, welcome to Kitco. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for having me. What are you focused on at Battery Age? So our, our primary focus is our Falcon Lake Lithium Project in Northwest Ontario. Um, it's an early stage exploration project, uh, which we're imminently about to start drilling. Mm -hmm. uh, why I like it, why, why I was true to the project. Um, it's in a really good jurisdiction in Ontario, very well supported from a provincial level. Uh, but our project has a lot of historical exploration success. Yeah. It was drilled in the 50s in 2014, 2016 and demonstrated some really good uh, thicknesses in the intercepts, good grades, in and um, it was very close to surface. So um, in, uh, that wasn't drilled much more and work stopped and we believe there's huge potential and we're about to get stuck in and find out what's in the ground and how much we have. So it's really exciting. Uh, so Gerard, uh, as noticed, uh, you were with uh, Pin uh, Pilbara Minerals uh, before, uh, then you've come up to Ontario. Uh, but uh, there's a couple of uh, people from Australia that have made the trek up to Canada. Yeah, there is. So I'm, I'm ably joined by, by two ex Pilbara guys as well. So Nigel Broomham is our GM of exploration. Uh, he was head of geology at Pilbara, so I went through the whole exploration phase into resource development and into production. Mm -hmm. And then we have Taylor Smith, who's our lead exploration geologist. He's, he's on the ground in Ontario and Armstrong, yeah. uh, leading the drilling campaign that's about to start. So mm -hmm. two exploration guys and, and scattered amongst Canada are many, many people who have been experienced in lithium development in the Pilbara. Yeah. Ken Brinson is a mentor of mine. He's obviously at Patriot. Uh, Chris Evans at Winsome and ma many, many other good guys. Alex Cheeseman at Critical Resources. So, yeah, it's a really exciting time for Canada in general and North America. And really excited to see how we can contribute to that, that whole development. Uh, Ooh. Just to confirm with this, uh, Gerard, so it's just that uh, Australia, there's been a lot of development. There's been a lot of focus on uh, what's happening in lithium less so in Canada right now, so you're seeing people that had success with lithium in the lithium sector in Australia coming up and then taking a hard look at Canada. Correct? Sure. Yeah, the, the supply chain has been built out pretty quickly in North America and, mm -hmm. and it, it provides great opportunity for Canada in general. Uh, traditionally in Australia, we've, we've mined and we've, um, we've taken that product and we've shipped it to, to the Asian markets. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the benefit of North America is the, the integrated supply chain is here. Um, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a North American market that is developing quite rapidly and, and I think um, the Australian ethos of rapid development and getting in and getting the projects done is going to ably assist Canada and, mm -hmm. and is going to provide that raw material to ensure that the supply chain is built out. Feed. Talk about uh, that supply chain. I mean, you know, you're still early right now, but you're really taking a look at that. Why is that important? What is it in terms of the factor making a successful project? Well, we, we saw a niche in the market for us in Ontario to develop uh, maybe a, a smaller project quickly. There's some major projects in Quebec, um, but the investment is there. So all the OEMs are now investing in Ontario, all up the east coast of America. Um, you know, I'll take Detroit for argument's sake, a historical automotive town mm -hmm. uh, is revolutionizing itself with EV manufacturing plants um, being, being constructed. So. Um, they will need raw material to supply. And, you know, I'm a massive advocate of hard rock spodumene. I think spodumene mm -hmm. is king. Um, and I think that will be the source for the raw material to, to build out the supply chain and to build out those conversion facilities and then those um, battery manufacturing facilities and into the OEMs and the, the EV manufacturers. Expand on that. So uh, within the space of uh, the lithium sector, you can have your clays, I guess, kind of down in Nevada where we're here. You have the brines down at the Correct. Solars. Then you also have uh, people are like, uh, how would you say, looking further ahead or uh, on the um, to be developed or to be determined would be a dir direct lithium extraction uh, from various brines. But uh, you say that uh, hard rock is going to be king. Why? It's, it's a proven technology, it's a proven proven extractive method. Um, we, we know how to do it, we've yeah. done it before and many groups have done it before us. Um, and it's consistent with support. Yeah. Um, you know what's in the ground, the rock is the rock. Um, when you drill it, you get your results and you can determine the pathway forward. I think the jurisdiction also helps. Uh, the support in Canada with respect to the development of mines is progressing at a rapid rate. So. 
Um, and also, Spodger in production has been proven for many, many years. Um, I do believe there will be a place for the likes of DLE, uh, for example. It's coming has been proven at a, a commercial scale yet, probably mm. not. So um, that's why I'm a big advocate for Hard Rock Spodger. I mean, I think that is, that is where the market is now and for the foreseeable future until some more of these technologies, which will come on, are developed and are commercialized. Uh, let's uh, just uh, go to the project that you're focused on in Thunder Bay. What's the community like around it? Who's some minds that are close to you? Yeah, so uh, Thunder Bay is a town of about 100,000 people town built on the paper and pulp industry so a blue collar town that supplies us all mm -hmm. all the facilities and labor we would need should we go to a production phase Dale. um we're also i've um, got great relationships with our first nations partners we've been working extremely closely with them for a considerable period of time yeah. in order to develop strong relationships because that's the that's the, the the foundation for the development of anything so the wine sands group have been really really helpful to us in in collaborating with us um, and and we've got really good support in the area with respect to mines um, you know, there's quite a few mines developing in and around the Ontario region uh, critical resources you obviously have frontier in the region mm -hmm. uh, green technology metals are in the region um, rock tech are there they're obviously uh, plowing a different path with respect to taking their concentrate to Germany mm -hmm. um, but there's there is uh, advancement and there is multiple projects at multiple different stages which are being ably supported from a provincial and a federal level. Are you funded? We are funded. We are yeah. funded for drilling, we're funded for a summer campaign and beyond. But we rapidly want to move quickly. That's the way we operate. That's the way we do things. We did it at Pilbara. It was, you know, first hole into production in just north of three years. It was a rapid element process. Um, permitting and environmental permitting is something we will take seriously in, in Canada as well. And we will kick off our baseline surveys pretty quickly to shorten our critical path. So we have the money, we will need more and yeah. we will be looking for support. But we feel we're a great project with a great team. So why wouldn't you get behind us? Mm -hmm. These projects still are like a multi-year thing. So right. I think uh, Lithium America's talked like about a decade or something for what they're doing. And then I think I hear on average like about eight years if you want to get a project into production. Correct, Gerard? Uh, depending on the size and depending yeah. on the strategy and depending on the the the... the the concentration technique, for want of a better description. Mm -hmm. um, DMS plants, which which we see a lot of the spot you mean, has big blocky crystals in, in Ontario and then in Quebec, is amenable to a simplistic DMS extractive technique. So um, has a low impact on the environment. So hopefully we're seeing there's also moves to expedite permitting regimes. And if yep. that happens, then that could open up a whole new uh, pathway to development. Um, you know, also depends on the scale of the project. So um, what we like about ours is, is our per current mineralization is thick, it's close to surface, which would be amenable to an open pit mining technique. And then the blocky crystals we see would be a, a quick uh, DMS uh, uh, technique which is low capital from a development perspective and we have a route to market we have rail close by we have all weather road access um, and we have proposed hydroelectric power station close to us so we, we would have green power so all the cards are stacked in our favor it's up to us now to get drilling it's up mm -hmm. to us to understand how much we have in the ground and it's up to us to push this forward uh, just clarify you mentioned blocky crystal i mean what does that uh, mean so squadron is formed in crystals um, and you can visibly see it it's it in 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 the rock in the hose mm. rock in the pegmatite rock mm. yeah um generally if you get bigger crystals um they liberate uh, mm. easier so what that means is when you crush the actual pegmatite it frees up the spodumene crystal so the crystal becomes liberated or free mm. and if it's of a size say greater between one to six millimeters um, a, a very simple um, DMS separation so dense media separation enables you to extract that that uh, spodumene crystal and, and that's your product that's your concentrate product if you have finer crystals, you then may have to consider, you know, a more advanced uh, methodology with milling and flotation, which, which, which is a bit more uh, capital intensive, but it, it, it then increases your recoveries and, and your ability to extract maximum value from the, from the resource. So um, what we see right now and what seems to be common across Canada is that it is 
big crystals, which yeah. which is good for DNS mm -hmm. extraction. In the uh, junior resource space, a good way to actually determine if a project, if a company is like a viable is if like people have done it before. Uh, now, the critical mineral sector is hot, lithium is hot. We've seen a lot of people that have had experience or have had past work in the precious metal space that they've come over to the lithium side right now. How much is that transferable, Gerard? So if you're looking at company X, and then this person has had a successful outcome with, say, their silver company, mm -hmm. and now they're getting to lithium space, and they're doing like a vanilla, say, hard rock, something in Ontario, Quebec, mm -hmm. wherever in Canada. What, how much of that skill space, how much of that skill overlaps, or how much of a gap is there? Well, yeah, it's a good question. And, and we do see a lot of gold companies rebranding into to lithium place for yeah. obvious reasons. Uh, mm -hmm. Geology is pretty similar. Uh, there is an element that is transferable, but um, the processing of, of, of spodumene and processing of pegmatites is it's pretty, it's a complex process. Um, when we developed filver minerals, um, it took us quite a while to refine our process and to get up the recovery curve to, to maximize the value we were achieving. Green bushes, which is the largest uh, spodumene producer in the world, um, had a lot of that IP and that knowledge locked up. So yeah. it took us quite a while. So. To be, to be completely honest, if people think they're just going to flip and become a lithium producer overnight, it's not as simple as that. And I, and I hate to be the one to say that. Um, we can develop a project, but can you maximize the value you extract from the project? You know, you look at Pilbara Minerals, they got up the, the curve so quickly, and I take my hat off to them, and I still have many friends there. Dale Henderson um, presented today, he, you know, a $15 billion company, when I joined it, it was sub 100 million and they've got you know $2.5 billion in the bank. That was done through a lot of hard work, yeah. through a lot of understanding of, of processing and through a lot of work, which got them up the recovery curve or so to maximize their revenues, you know? So um, there's not a lot of people out there, Michael, who've done it. I'm lucky to be able to say I have done it and, and two of the guys with me have done it as well. Um, and there's there's a small boon to pick from, yeah. and a lot of them are in Canada. He's come out for. Lastly, uh, what are the uh, milestones, catalysts over the next couple of months? Yeah, so our main drill program is key. Um, we will we will commence that immediately to understand um, yeah. um, the the potential of the the resource. Then we we will accelerate. So to do that, we will we will look at probably raising some money later in the year at some point. Why not? Um, and then that will enable us, pending success obviously, to accelerate as quickly as possible. Uh, in parallel with that, we'll look at what a development pathway or strategy would look like. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to place an expiration target or a, or a timeline for a, a maiden resource post the maiden drill campaign. A little early to, to, to project what that may look like initially, but we feel we will have a handle on that quite quickly. And then it's all systems go. Gerard, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me, Michael. My name is Michael McRae with Keiko Mining here at Fast Market's 15th Lithium Supply and Battery and Raw Materials 2023 event. Kitco Mining special coverage of Fast Market's Lithium Supply and Battery Raw Materials is brought to you by Lindian Resources.